my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, uh, Nick Cabot and Holly Harwood. Are you here? Hello? <laughs> okay. And um, Nick and Holly are um, uh, very hard workers in the Fukushima response network Bay Area. And they've been vigiling and writing, and I re read uh, Nick's blog and just fell in love with him. I mean, you can't speak about this without um, knowing what your uh, uh, spiritual situation is because it is it, it's so challenging and Nick writes so beautifully from that perspective I want to welcome uh, Nick and Holly thank you thank you all for coming here um, I can still remember over a year ago walking up the streets at night uphill all the way to try to find my brothers and sisters in this fight against Fukushima. I had been fighting by myself for a long time and was feeling um, very strange and very out of step with the world. I would walk down the street and imagine there was no one there. I was trying to see into the future what might happen if things went wrong at the Fukushima plant. Um, and at the same time I was going through this, you know, writing about it and doing all kinds of things by myself, other people were thinking about it too. Some of them are here, obviously. Uh, two people, Carol Woolman, an activist and organizer, and Cecile Pineda, an author and director, were talking about it. And those two decided to do something about it and called a meeting. And they called about five or six or seven other people to visit with them. And how they found me, I don't know. I can't tell you. And I also can't tell you how good it felt to be in a place where my perceptions were welcomed, a place where people were active and organized and doing something. So that night, Fukushima Response Bay Area was born. We had a different name at the start, really, but we decided to ally with our brothers up in Sebastopol, the original Fukushima Response. Um, okay, so anyway, everyone there had been working alone and was very distressed at being alone and they were also very happy now to be together. And all of them were very concerned about the same thing. Even back two and a half years ago, uh, the spent fuel pool at number four was a major concern. It's still a major concern for many reasons. Uh, you know, earthquake, uh, handling the fuel, uh, a loss of electrical power. Do you know that a mouse crawled into the electrical control panel there and shut down the cooling systems for four spent fuel pools, including the large one, the common spent fuel pool? Uh, it's, a very, it's a very funny situation there. In any case, I discovered that acting together we could do something. And what I want to say is only in acting together can we do anything. You know, it's a long shot no matter what we're doing. But only acting together locally, nationally, and internationally are we going to have any effect. I also want to say that there's maybe a positive side to this. I think Fukushima is going to bring people together in a way that nothing else has. I was in New York when 9-11 happened, and I think we all know how people just jumped in very selflessly, they gave blood, they offered to work at the site, they worked at phone banks, they did many things. I think what happens with Fukushima will be the same, but it's not going to be over in a day or a week or a month. It's, we're looking at another 40 years or 100 years, I don't even know. 
it's going to stay with us. And I think it's going to change people, but in a good way. Uh, I think someone else in men mentioned the spiritual opportunity, and I think that's really something to focus on here, because we can't control the other part of it. We can only do our part and see how it turns out. Um, so action is key, concerted action, uh, remembering our togetherness and our strengths together. So don't despair. I want someone to come up here and tell you what to do. I want someone to come up here and guide you and direct you in your action. That someone happens to be here. She's a committed activist, a very consistent activist, who doesn't waver when things get a little screwy. That person is Holly Harwood. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you, Nick. Now, I'm a very concrete person, so I have actions you can take. And I look at most of you, I've seen most of you around. You all know what to do. Number one, call the White House. The comment line is 202-456-1111. If you pick up a copy of the Fukushima Digest, it's in there in case you can't remember it. Call early and often. Really let them know it's on our radar and we want action. Now, every Friday, members of Fukushima Response and our friends go out and do what we call hazmatting. We put on white hazmat suits and hand out flyers at BART stations or First Friday or wherever. You can join us. It's fun. You don't have to put on a hazmat suit if that feels kind of weird to you. You can do it in plain clothes. But it's good to let people know. Many people thank us for doing this. Many people have no idea that Fukushima is still happening. They say, oh, wasn't that a couple years ago and it's all taken care of? No. So I feel it's really important to let people know directly. Every month on the 11th, there's a protest by our friends at No Nukes Action outside the Japanese embassy in San Francisco. This is from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and it's near the Embarcadero Bar. And as so many people have said before me, sign petitions, sign, we, we have a petition at FRBA. Um, you can also write letters. I know that's the liberal thing to do, write letters. But write letters anyway and call your elected officials and let them know that this is affecting us in California. You know, after Fukushima, the infant mortality rate on the West Coast went up 38%. So if our officials don't care about what happens to people in Japan, where the amount of thyroid abnormalities in children is up to 44% in Fukushima. If they don't care about that, care about it's affecting Californians, it's harming us. Now I've been asked to read an excerpt from The Devil's Tango, so I will read a very brief one. It's called Tsunami of Another Kind. It's May 20th. 70 days following the nuclear catastrophe at Fukushima Daiichi, the State Department issues a secret letter to Japan guaranteeing there will be no effort made to bar its foodstuffs from entering the United States. The levels of cesium and iodine-31 are shown to be exceptionally high over the northern hemisphere over continental United States. Japan has asked the United States to cooperate in not releasing fallout information. The EPA no longer reports the levels of contamination sweeping over the continent. The Norsk Institute website, where these findings originally featured, has been taken down. But there are numerous mirror sites where day by day anyone can watch the radioactive clouds swirling over the waters and the land. A bill is before Congress allowing the government shutdown of the internet. An authorization before Congress declares that henceforth, the president will be able to declare war throughout the world, anywhere, at any time, bypassing even token congressional approval. 
According to the most recent judicial determination, police are now entitled to enter homes unannounced and warrantless. Resistance will help henceforth be criminalized. In the heartland, the FBI questions children without their parents' consent. The administration uses the state's secret privilege to hold itself immune from prosecution by victims of its policy of extraordinary rendition, a butcher's name for torture. In the country of death, the collapse of the planter's revolution, as Cecile calls the American Revolution, the collapse of the planter's revolution is nearly total, just a few more steps before the dark. This too is a tsunami, but of another sort. Unless, unless, thank you. <laughs>